What's up guys? I just want to talk about the importance of exercise during these crucial times. Not only is it good to stay in shape all the time, but exercise helps boost your immune system so we can fight this virus. It helps you to be happy. It can creates natural endorphins. Exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people just don't shoot their husbands. <laughs> That's right, exercise and save a life. Just kidding. So, well, I mean, I'm not really kidding. Exercise really does boost your endorphins and make you happy. So, Justin's showing you the workouts that he does with our weights here. We are fortunate enough to have a gym, and next time I will show you a few workouts to do if you don't have a gym or any weights on hand. So, I just want everybody to... You know, see how I start my day. Well, I start my day with worship, with the morning devotional time with the Lord. I want to be spiritually fit, mentally fit, and physically fit. Everything else is up to God and nature and whatever happens. So I, didn't, I have never showed you what we do. This gym, I'm blessed to have a gym in my bedroom. So I get a workout every day. My wife gets to work out. We don't have to go anywhere, so we're really blessed, really thankful, but we live so far in the mountains, it would be almost impossible to make it to the gym. So, enough of that. I'm gonna get back to my workout, get some sweat going, get my endorphins up, and then I'm gonna go clean a poopy retic cage and show you guys our biggest snakes. Stay tuned. Okay, as promised, I said I'd show you my biggest snakes. This is my biggest snake. She outgrew Opal, who I'll, I'll probably get out and show you, but this is Raj. This is our female phantom, and don't get this camera too close. She doesn't like cameras, you know, remember? I know. So, but this is a sweet girl. This girl I got as a, a very small snake. She's been with me since she was like, I'll show you the 50% the super dwarf male that I've been pairing her with, and she was actually smaller than him when I got her. But if you need more of a workout, this right here will do it. Come down and do squats with your big snake. Mm. So this is Raj. And uh, yeah, you can see her size. She's a good size snake. She's not, you know, huge compared to Retix, but she is our biggest snake. Opal used to be our biggest, but this girl just decided to outgrow her. So this is Raj, and I love this snake. I love all my snakes, but this girl is very special to me. You know, help. Okay. This is Uno. This is a four year old, 50% super dwarf phantom male. And I've been pairing him with Opal, who's right here. And uh, she's kind of going into shed. You can see her eyes are a little blued over. And I'm hoping that she's, you know, going to go this year. So I'm not gonna mess with her, but I wanted to show you the size of a 50%. This guy's four years old, been breeding, locking with both uh, Raj and Opal here. And Opal is almost exactly the same size as Raj, the snake that I just showed you. But like I said, she's sitting in there, kind of coiled up, going into blue, and I don't wanna disturb her. I want these guys to finish breeding, but even during breeding, I mean, this guy literally was been breeding and he's still super chill. He bit me when I very first got him, but he hasn't ever, I mean, that was our brand new introduction to each other. But ever since then, he's been like, oh, you're just going to feed me and put me in with girls. I like you. So this is Uno. And we call him Uno because of this one rosette on the side, how it's real long stripe. So that was how he got the name Uno. But so I'm going to put him back in here with Opal. You can see about the size Opal is. You know compared to my hand she's kind of shaking me off a little bit but so I'll put them back in together let them continue to do their thing until like I said I'm a hundred percent sure either she's setting on eggs or I'm a hundred percent sure she's gravid I'll keep them paired but uh I can grab out Dottie real quick she is our 75% Kalatoa 12.5% Jampea Super Dwarf, produced by none other than Richard Bilbo, great guy, and um, 
she is possible het snow, so she's possibly het uh, albino and possibly het aneuthoristic. I'm going to try to hopefully prove that out with one of the super dwarfs that is 100% albino, or is an albino, and is 100% aneuthoristic. So hopefully we have some good clutches coming soon. And <clears throat> people that have been asking about the snakes that I might have available, I'll be selling ball pythons. Uh, some of my ball pythons will be sold through Freedom Breeder. And then all of my dwarf and super dwarf retics will be sold by Garrett Hartle at Reach Out Reptiles. The only snakes that I'm going to personally sell of the retics are going to be from these two pairings that I just showed you. So hopefully I'll have some 25% super dwarf cows and some 25% super dwarf super phantoms, bantams, uh, golden childs, that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that and I will grab Dottie really quick, show her off, and then I'll let you guys get about your business. Strike right at me right off the bat. Okay, this is another snake that super food aggressive. I love her to death. Watch once I get her out. She won't be aggressive at all, but once I open this, she's going to come out striking and biting. So that's why some people I think don't want to have or talk negatively about retics, but they're smart enough to realize once they come out that it's not food. I just have to be careful once I very first open this. See? <laughs> Back up, girl. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's part of my favorite things is the adrenaline that you get from having these. Back up, girl. Don't bite me. Back up. Don't be striking at me now. So once I get a hold of her and get her out, she's fine. She's over. She's three years old. I'll bring her over here to you, mama. She's three year old female. See, she smells me now and she's cool. So once she's out, I don't have to worry about her. But man, do you see that? That That's just complete food aggression. Like food, you know, she's like, oh, there's movement, I gotta eat, I gotta eat. Especially since I don't have, my male's not ready yet, but I think she's building follicles. I think she's like trying really hard to build up um, follicles for eggs. So this is probably about the size that she's gonna get. She's probably full grown pretty much, she might get maybe in her entire lifetime another foot but she's not going to get much bigger than this and uh i just i love this snake i love it how they come out like that and give you a little bit of an adrenaline rush but you know once you get them out they're totally trustworthy they're totally fine like i don't worry about her i'll let her crawl all over me crawl all over my face move around in front of her you know she's not in any way aggressive she's not in any way even defensive that wasn't defensive that wasn't aggressive that was completely a food strike and it's because a lot of times I open and I immediately feed them but that's why we do the tap training we touch them on the head I talk to them I say hey we're not eating girl we're not eating girl and they realize that right away but this is about the size of a full-grown super dwarf uh, at least this girl. I mean, there's a, definitely a lot smaller super dwarfs, but I, I feed her pretty heavily. Um, so, but man, Richard did an amazing job producing these snakes. Uh, I had her brother, and his name is Mozart. He actually lives with Brian Far Farley. I apologize. When I first met the Farleys, I used to think their name was Farelli, so I apologize for butchering your name. It's kind of like when people call us Lathrop instead of Lathrop. Um, so anyways, if you want to check out uh, Reptile Revival, their channel, you can see her brother Mozart. And sh this girl is absolutely stunning, beautiful, but Mozart had just a little bit nicer pattern. I wish that she had that same pattern, but um, awesome snakes, awesome temperament, and just absolutely love love my retics so if you're looking for a super awesome pet if you don't want a ball python that's just gonna lay there and and you never have to worry about it coming out of the enclosure at you like that ball pythons are great but if you like a little bit of adrenaline in the morning before you hold your animal i definitely recommend getting a retic <laughs> or you could get a carpet python like shag who i should have named punk because he always tries to his is more of a defensive leave me alone strike than a food strike because he'll smell me, make sure it's me, and then he'll be like, well, I'm going to tag you real quick. 
But then once I get him out, he's totally chill. But anyways, I can't say enough good things about these snakes. And uh, even if she would have got me, if she would have bit me, she would have immediately let go because she realizes that I'm not food. Um, just awesome animals. I can't say enough about them and just can't wait till the weather gets nicer so I can take them outside and let them crawl around in the grass and just enjoy, you know, enjoy having my snakes. So, I mean, in the size of her head, that wouldn't have been a terrible bite. It would have maybe drew blood. It maybe would have hurt a little bit, but I guarantee you those fingers that are all torn up, that was from a dog from a little tiny Boston Terrier and about ripped my fingers off two months ago. So I can tell you that I would way rather be bit by a snake than a dog. Even Raj, I would rather be bit by her, I think, than, than a dog. So she's gonna give me kisses. As long as it's a, a tongue kiss and not a bite kiss, but. So, all right, I'm gonna get in the shower after I get these enclosures cleaned. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna get in the shower and start my work day and uh, yeah thank you guys so much for joining me this morning I hope everybody's staying safe staying healthy and I just want to say God bless everybody God bless America and uh, love your snakes love each other and have a good day <laughs>